Yehovah Malak Olam Olamad Yehovah Malak Yami Rakis Yehovah Gadol Makarian Tios Yehovah Adonai Yehovah Elohim Kurios Tios Panta Kreta Kurios Tios Pistos Elda et Ehova Ehova Elohim Gadol Gadol Gebura Ehova Dabar Halal Elohim Dabar Halal Ibasilian Kurios Otios O Panta Kreta Basilias Basilian Kai Kurios Kurion Elda et Ehova El Emuna Ehova Derek Emuna Bakar Mishpat Shaba. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, and ignorant, great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkanu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone, and great goodness and goodwill towards them, who love to walk breath by breath, in the cherishing and in the nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Understanding the true purpose of our calling in this church age through the enlightenment of the scriptures in the powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And no longer living the way of the old sin nature or proving that we are always ignorant and arrogant, but rather waking up from the congregation of the dead, lest, lest walk to fulfill the prescribed demands of the Bible. Letting go our fraudulent way of life, letting go the vain glory of show on this earth, let's truly understand what it is the church age and God the Father demands in the church age only the disciples if you are a believer and if you are not yet a disciple make sure that your calling is still not elected to this extent dear brethren the things which have been given for us in the church age we shall meditate upon it after this prayer using the privacy of your priesthood in confession of your sins through rebound. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of the Lord. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto their grace, the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past. So that sovereign Lord, the things which you have given we shall learn on it. We shall make up our life on that to be completely founded, rather than making up our life into the oppression where these people are depressed without knowing and valuing thy righteousness and thy valuable judgments. To this extent, Father, as we're going to study these things, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the things which have been prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past, would enlighten and challenge us of your great and unique spiritual manna of the heavenly standards. In Christ, much less peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. Amen. As we are looking some of the things in the Bible, in the Bible which teaches to us, joining as disciples and growing up as grammatias, 
the principle being found in John 1 to well as technan believer as the rabbis would call those who have been joined there for the instructions as lamad as we read that in Deuteronomy 4 5 as well teach your children diligently the word teach for us in the Hebrew is lamad which is equivalent to two Greek words in the Greek which is manthano plus didasco the word manthano is nothing but a disciple who is learning and the people of rabbi or the teachers they call them as technon as they graduate daily in the technical education when they're going up or growing to be the next frontier engineers so looking upon this word in john 1 12 anyone who believes in christ jesus our lord of our god we have been given the power the exousia authority to be called as the technon children of god the great and unique standards of this technon children demands that you have to be a disciple coming close enough in the new testament we learn for the first time in the place of antioch the christian the name was been called when you find the people who were graduated over there for more than one year in the doctrine and those disciples were called as Christians. Looking into the life of Apostle Paul, the one who said, I imitate Christ and you imitate me and follow my footsteps. Even he was a disciple, we read in Acts 9.26. And many times, even in the place of Damascus, even in the place of wherever Barnabas took him and went, he was bold enough in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to preach them the truth and nothing else. And while he's clearing their confusion, the rituals which were already been set in the pulpits for that time in those days, because whenever they live the true word of God, they come back to stupid rituals. The same thing what we are able to find today in this present Christendom as well. Bible doctrine says exegete the passages and teach word by word, line by line, precept upon precept. You shall not let go even iota upon iota and carrera upon carrera. But these people, they don't come weekly once to the church. These people, they don't come every day to the church. But they come weekly once to the church and forgetting the great principle of Proverbs 8, 34 through 36. These have become absolutely ruined and followed into the standards of confusion. And as we read in Proverbs 21, 16, the people who are going away from the way of intelligence or the way of circumspect or the way of pursuing the truth called a sakal in the Hebrew, they are the people who are safely dwelling in the congregation of the dead. And we read that word from Rafa to Rafaha. And the word Rafa meant to say they begin in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, being healthy enough, but since they relax and sink down, become idle, they become the congregation called as the congregation of the ghosts, the congregation of the dead. Why? Because they have left the way of understanding. Why they have left the way of understanding? Because they haven't seriously thought why God created man, or in fact, why God made him to be born on this earth. To this extent, dear brethren, the word of the Lord God says for us, if we don't grow up day by day learning the word of the Lord, day by day graduating in the mind of Christ, then you will forego the way of the intelligence or the sakal and you will become foolish and when you become foolish you will mind the things of these foolish ones you will not grow up to be as a strong gebur man as the bible demands you will not realize the sevenfold spirit of lord god the holy spirit operating in us and you will become as rituals to the core in our pulpits and these rituals will make you not to carry your cross every day but these rituals will make you to pay the tithes monthly ones attend the church weekly ones and the great commands and the demands of the bible that everyone should be a disciple of the word of the lord everyone should carry his cross and follow my christ and if you don't carry your cross and follow my christ
you are no way concerned to be with the work of the Lord. So losing these things, you end up into the standards of this world. And as you end up into the standards of this world, you become one more alien or one more Judas Iscariot to the Lord. Therefore, the Bible readily teaches to us so many examples. We have for us to learn why we have to be born as Technon. Being born in Christ, you are a disciple. You are a born again believer in the Lord for the standards of Tekna, so that you could be called from your rabbi that you have been a teaching or you have been a learned disciple from the rabbi. So, when this is going up, joining as a disciple, in Matthew 13, 52, we read, you have to grow up as a grammatias in the Lord, or a New Testament theologian, or a scribe. And do you know what is the scribe? People may think he is an excellent, skillful writer as a scribe. But in Ezra chapter 7, in verse number 6, the Hebrew word is very important because it says, Maher or Ma'ir, and the word for us is translated as ready. But the Hebrew word is Maher. As some of the people would know what is the word, to be very prompt, quick, skilled, ready. Originated from the word called as Mahar, and that is nothing but to be always prepared and quick enough to do the will of God the Father and to put to death those things which are against the will of God the Father. A maher ready. And this is what we have been said in Isaiah chapter 56, verse number 1. And we have been said, Declare and be ready to do the things of the Lord God. Because as long as we fail, to be the ready scribe or diligently searching and seeking the will of God. So long we are still lagging behind in performing the great work of the Lord God, which has been bestowed upon our shoulders in this church age. He has entrusted us his work. He has called us to be into the standards of his glory. But we, not being worthy enough or making to become ready scribes diligently enough to do the will of God, we haven't been the Maher or the Mahar scribes to the Lord. First of all, you don't join as disciples. Far less we could expect from you that you become a ready scribe. A scribe is the one who is expounding the law by taking down each and every note of every Hebrew and Greek alphabet given for us and translating them according to the will of God the Father and learning through exegesis. That is a way how you keep as a maher. And then he says, guard the judgment and to do justice for my salvation is near, deliverance is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. And this word revealed is nothing but gala. And it meant to say naked exposition of the truth. So, dear brethren, he says, Blessed is the man who does this. Or the word we meant to say, Yasher. Or the word which is we read to meant to say, to be happy. The same thing even in Psalm 119, we find this great key word in verse 121, which diligently teaches to us that saying, I have or I have built up or I have made into existence the judgments and the righteousness of Lord God so that God the Father would not make me to rest in the people who are decepting or defrauds or deception. This is a very key principle verse which every believer should apply to his fate upon his eyebrow. It is not the lines where it come upon your fate because in Indian mythology people will say the fate which has been there upon your fate had forehead lines. It is not that. What we have to do is we have to type in or 
make a great endorsement as Cain was left behind with a mark because no one should be looking to kill him. In the same way, every believer or every man who has been born in Christ or who has been born in this world and we being born again in Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have to be the people to serve him in spirit and not in the flesh. We have to make up upon our forehead Psalms 119 verse 121 to be our fate line. Do you know what does it say? Lord, I build up thy judgments. Mishfat, the code of wisdom as commandments which you have given to me. And your righteousness. That is what we read in Isaiah 56, 1. The righteousness of Lord God to be revealed. The righteousness is nothing but the right wiseness. That which has been demanded by the Bible. That which has been demanded for our lives. So I build it up, Asa, that's what the word 6213 code is all about. I make it up in my life, O Lord, according to the code of wisdom and according to the right wiseness in the word of God. When I'm making it up, O Lord, make me to see or make me not to rest in the regions of defrauded, deceptive people. That's what he meant to say the word for us, Yashak, A-S-H-A-K, or in the English it says, leave me not to my oppressors. These are not the word to be called as oppressors, or we call the word in the translation, defraud, and the people who deceitfully deceive you. This should be the fate line upon every man's head. Are you making up or building up the mis the mishfat, the code of wisdom according to the commandments of Lord God? Or are you making up to be according to the standards of the righteousness of Lord God? If you don't do both of these things, you are in the region where you are dwelling to be called as deceitfully deceiving fraud people. And that's what it is happening today for us. You don't execute the court of wisdom, mishfat, the judgments, the ordinances of the Lord God. Neither you look to execute what is the sitkenu, the righteousness of the Lord God. In order to look the court of wisdom, God the Father, what he has prescribed us for us in the Bible, and God the Son, his righteousness, what he wants us to live in this life, we need to walk upright, yashar, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And we don't love to live in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because we love to yet reside in the lustful patterns of the old sin nature. Therefore, with Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, Romans 8, verses 6 through 8, either you are in the flesh or in the spirit. You cannot say, I will be both. Therefore, he says for us, put to death, necrosate, rise up from the congregation of the dead of your flesh. Be alert to be always, not to grieve, not to squelch, not to wax, not to lie, not to resist. But rather grow up. But dear brethren, we are so stupid. We don't want to be maher. Or the word called for us, ready. Therefore, dear brethren, but here Ezra was a ready scribe. Being joined as disciples, every believer should grow up as scribes. And the one who is becoming a scribe, he is an expert in expounding the word of God. And that's what in Matthew 13, 52, after teaching us the six parables, he's coming to the seventh one. What would be the kingdom of God, a kingdom of heaven? And is describing every believer should grow up as a scribe. And out of his treasure from old and new, he gets every time that which is new to the Lord and beautiful to my Christ. And that's what every believer in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, being renovated in the standards of the thinking, putting upon his fate line of his head, he should realize that he is building up the code of wisdom. He is doing that which is demanded in the Bible as the righteousness of the Lord God. Thus... We find it from the Bible saying that, Lord, let me not rest. Don't make me to dwell. Don't make to be residing in the regions where there are deceptively deceiving, defrauded people. And what is this deceptively deceiving, defrauded people? 
This is in simple terms the congregation of the dead. Therefore we find in Ephesians 5.14, Arise, awake, that thou sleepest. Look upon the acribos, what the word says in the Greek. It meant to say, what are the great and unique and true demands of the word of the Lord God? What are it? Wake up into it. Look into those standards and come back. And that's what the people are not able to understand. What are the demands of the Bible? Everyone they are into their own fraudulent venture of life. And you know what the Bible says in Psalms 119 and 118? It teaches to us that your life is already been rejected by the Lord. You all are rejected pieces. The reason why he says is that you haven't come to look what are the choke demands of the Bible and you have become errors and you love to do shagag. But here, the same one in 121, in the A in file, he tiles for us. Lord, I have built up thy judgments. Lord, I have built up thy great righteous standards. Lord, let me not be in the regions of this defrauded people. The people who love to rest or who love to relax, who love to sink down. Where in the regions of the fraudulent way of life, showing their vain glory towards men, but towards God, they have already been rejected once because they haven't come to look and learn what is the will of God. Therefore, they don't come as disciples, they come as believers. But we have to be not just as grown up as scribes, but he wants us to be like a ready scribe who has been illustrated for us through Ezra. And Ezra was a ready scribe unto the Lord. The Hebrew word so fair, and then so fair meant to say scribe, but the word is for us maher so fair in the Hebrew. And the Syriac version it reads sofro kokma. And the word meant to say, it does not really mean to be like a speedy writer or an excellent penman. But you know what the word says? He, the one who is eminently skillful in expounding the word of God. Therefore, he's been called in First Corinthians 3.10 as a wise master builder. And whenever he was teaching the truth, there is always an enemy coming up to destroy him, to slay him off, to kill him off. That's what we find even in Damascus. They wanted to slay him off. He was been sent down by a basket. Here also when Barnabas takes him out to preach in the Jerusalem, and the people, they were there. Again, they thought when he was expounding the word of Lord God boldly, we read that in Acts 9, 28 and 29. Again, they thought to slay him off. Because the traditions, the practices, what the people, they are relaxedly dwelling in the regions of their deception or in the regions of their defrauded lives. They don't want to wake up. The same thing what they did to my Christ, the same thing what they did to the prophets, the same thing what they did to the apostles. Because they knew if the truth emerges out, the truth will set them free. So the best option is kill off the truth. Don't give an occasion or a place to the truth. Therefore, Christ our Lord of our God was being given into the hands of the men. What did they do? They slaved him off. Now, once again, he's been given into the hands, but not in the way of the flesh, but in the way of his resurrected appearance for us when we look, being born in Christ, you have been indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And as Lord God, the Holy Spirit indwells in you, Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, also will come and abide in us. We read in the Gospel, chapter 17 of John. And when he's been abiding in us, he's getting God the Father also. So once again, he's been given in our hands. But what are we doing now? We are grieving and squelching and vexing and we are resisting the will of God. The same thing what they did, the same thing we are doing. How? You may say, no, we are living a pure life. We are making up our life to appear beautiful outward to the people. But do you know what? By not becoming disciples, by not growing up as grammatias, and not becoming a ready scribe to expound the word of God, whenever you open up your mouth, your mouth should be the 
tongue of a ready writer, ready scriber. And whenever you open up your mouth, it has to be divine oracles. Whenever you talk, it has to be seasoned with grace, with salt. Looking upon the time, you have to be the communicators of doctrine, but it will require someone to teach you and the basic fundamentals to teach, to learn for you to realize that we don't have any differences in the standards of maintaining jealousies in the churches. And that's how the churches break up with the standards of mental attitude sense. You are still burdened a lot. You have your own burden to carry while you worry about the burden of the people in the divisions of the church. Come and take up your foot. But you say, no, because of such and such reason, because of such and such reasons, we will leave the church. You know, in First Chronicles 4.40, what did they find? They find a fat pasture. They have been given exceedingly great ability to go back and take in the word of the Lord God and grow up. And when they were been so, they had a great peace and tranquility in their life. The simple reason what the churches have failed today, you don't find in the church of good food, fat pasture, where they could be fed with the word of the Lord God. And since they don't find the word of the Lord God, they find the churches where they will be expound or expounded to revenues wolves. Who love to have a faint show, fraudulent way of life in the before man. But as far as the scriptures and the word of the Lord God is concerned, they are absolutely zero, zero, point zero, zero. And yet they think they are great. And yet the flock loves to heed for them, though the Bible says in Zechariah 11, for feed the flock of my slaughter, or shepherd, or give them the right word, which has been haragued by the shepherd. And the Bible calls everyone to be a ready scribe. That's the kingdom of heaven. Whether you believe it or not, dear brethren. That's the kingdom of heaven. You have to be a so fair maher. And to look into that, you have your mechanics. How? First, seven times read the Bible. And then what you do after reading the Bible upon your knees, go to write, kneeling down upon your knees, the Bible. That's what the work of a scribe begins. The same thing we read yesterday in Isaiah 52, 14, 54, 14, sorry, 54, 11 and 12. I will lay down with the foundations with the word called as sophers. The word is not the blue stone, what you find in the English. It is called as scribe, sophers, again the word, origin of it. Every believer's life begins if you are a scribe to the law. And that's what Ezra was been given for us in the Old Testament as a ready scribe, a man who prepared his heart to learn the ways of the Lord and to teach and preach the truth. You know, he erected, he absolutely prepared in the fear of the Lord God to do what is right. Because battle belongs to the Lord. We are his workmen with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our strength, with all of our mind. We are here to occupy ourselves to do the battles of the Lord, not our own useless, worthless life battles which we are thinking. And though you may be a man recording the history pages of men, but as the earth will vanish off, your history pages will be vanished out. But you have to make your history in the pages of the pillar of the temple of the living Lord of a God. And there it will abide forever. And you fight, you think you're fighting it in your strategy, in your tactics. No. It is purely by the divine grace of the Lord God working in us in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, fighting the good fight of the Lord God, provided we are physically, mentally, spiritually prepared, constantly being controlled and marching in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And by that we meant to say you have to be already scribe to the law. A scribe who is my heir, a scribe who is quick, a scribe who is skilled, a scribe who is prepared to answer in season or out of season the things. If ever there are unbelievers who are asking you what is the purpose you believe in Christ and shutting the mouth of this foolish and ignorant people if it is the will of God. We read that in First Peter 3. Then how much more we have to be abiding ourselves to the work of God. And that's not possible if you just read the Bible. You have to become a scribe. 
And God the Father demands in the church church beginning with disciples. In Matthew 13, 52, we read, Disciples growing up as grammatias. In Acts chapter 1, beginning his ministry with the disciples. Even the life of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this earth, when we read that, we are looking into the standards of disciples, disciples, disciples. Armatias of the Josephus who has been there, who came, he was also a disciple of the Lord to take his body to bury. Even whenever you look, it is disciples. Even Ananias, who has been there to make a prayer to Paul, he was a disciple. They were not just convertees, they were not just believers as the churches are reigning today in believing standards. How serious you have to be about this great calling in the church age to be the disciples. And if you think, I will be still a believer and I will not carry my cross every day and follow my Christ and not become a disciple, then you would cry tomorrow saying, Lord, Lord. And if it is by the grace of Lord God to give us grant of this grace, if it were only by his work to save us, you would be saved. If not, you will be kaput. You really not understand the way how you appear before the king's table to eat without clothes. And he said, who is this man without clothes? Tie his hands and legs and put him where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. And their part will be to the left, he said in Matthew 25, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. You are not able to realize. And tomorrow you may cry out, saying in Matthew 7, stating to the point, Lord, Lord, in thy name we did wonders, in thy name we did great works, in thy name we did prophesy. And God the Father would say, I confess and I say before you, homo lageo, in accord with the fact and to the truth, I never knew you, workers of iniquity, depart from me. You may be thinking being a believer is enough. No. The church our Bible in the church age do not demand believers. They have to be disciples. And disciples were called as Christians for the first time in Antioch. Even when you come to break up your bread in the standards of your Lord's communion table, disciples would come in Acts chapter 19. We read that in verse number 7. And the church age constantly demands disciples, disciples, disciples. And not just disciples, they have to be grown-up grammatias. The New Testament theologians. That's what the Bible demands in our life. And if you do not know or learn what are the prescription of the demands of the Bible, the Bible tells you that you are already rejected one. In Psalms 119, in 118, Salah. You are trodden down. You are the rejected ones. The already God the Father has rejected you. And you love to replace that life in the standards of the lay, of the way what you live now. He calls them, it is a life of a fraudulent show. What is chaff to the wheat, so is your life. You are living a life and you think you are really doing great, but it's a fraudulent way of life. Therefore, you need to come back to do what is the code of wisdom, Mishfat. You need to execute that righteousness of the Lord God. And when you do that, then there will be no relaxation or you will reside or abide in the regions what we call in the Bible as defrauded men. And why you have in your life no peace? Why you have in your life no prosperity? Why you don't have the things which are pertaining to doctrine? Do you know why? Because you still love human viewpoint. And human viewpoint is satanic to the core. And satanic to the core, they always love to reject the truth. Because satan hates nothing but the truth. We should hate nothing but the lies. And we should love the truth. But Satan inculcates your mind for gimmicks, inculcates your minds for miracles, inculcates your minds for great signs and wonders. And you reject the basic thing which is called for you to be a disciple. You will be filling up the church age with every idiotic morons. 
If God the Father would grant us permission, we would drag them out and shoot them there and there itself. Because they are spreading lies upon lies. As Isaiah said in the time of Isaiah chapter 6, I live in the midst of these unclean people. So are the midst of these people where I am residing in the present Christendom of the church age, who do not give priority for exegesis, who do not give priority for discipleship program, who do not make up their believer's life to become a life of grammatias and growing up as grammatias and becoming the work of the Lord and the great army of the Lord for what cause he has chosen us to fill the earth like the canker worms and war till to the root, the thinking of Satan out from our pulpits and our life. We are not living in the midst of those men who love the standards of God's glory to be to the highest reflected in our lives as we read yesterday in Ezekiel 43.2. To give the ore light, to show forth the light which has been reflected by the light given by Christ Jesus our Lord. But Ezra was not so in the midst of such crisis. After the captivity, when they came along, he prepared his heart. That's what we read in Ezra 7.10. And what did he do? Being preparing his heart. We look in chapter 7 in verse number 10. The word prepared is kun, that is to make firm, stabilized, established, to be firmly fixed up to be directed to the work of the Lord God and in the way what we call it is to apply and to be proper and sure in doing the will of God. What did he do? He prepared his heart to seek. What is the word seek? Again, darash. To search out diligently, to inquire with all the things pertaining to their life. And thus he says, making a very great inquisition and searching out what the law of the Lord. And after searching out, what did you do? The law that time Torah, now for us from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. That's what it has to be. Every believer should come back to realize what is there in the New Testament. Every believer should know in comparison in the standards of the Old Testament so that we could know now what we are and where we are. So he says, he made a thorough inquiry of the law of Jehovah, and then what did he do? He went along to do it. Again, the word Asa, to build up the same thing in Psalm 119 in 121. I have built up thy judgments, O Lord, thy court of wisdom. I have built up thy righteousness, O Lord, which is right and perfect and correct and accurate in thy sight. Why? Because of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who always demands to be upright. So the same thing when he inquired, he went to do. And what did he do? And he taught. What did he teach? Again, the word Lamad, that is Mantano plus Didasco. In Israel, that time, the people who have been chosen to rule with God. What? The first one he says, the statutes and the word meant to say choke prescribed the demands of the Lord God for our lives on this earth. And today we are not able to find such ready scribes in our pulpits as pastor teachers because they forgot the concept it is disciples growing up as scribes, growing up as grammatias. And if it were not by the grace of Lord God to teach us these things by his will, so that this generation shall not perish, even we would have gone in the way of this man, the way of Cain, the way of Korah. Today the churches are teaching to you such ways, the ways of Cain, the ways of Korah, the ways of Dethan, who rebelled against the Lord. But they're not teaching to you the ways of right word of God. These are empty clouds without rain in it. They shower but no rain. So we read over here for us dear brethren. First thing what does he teach? He teach to you the demands. What is the prescription demanded in the Bible? If you don't come to become a disciple in knowing what is the prescription taught for us in the Bible, then he calls us that you are already rejected people, Salal, what we read in Psalms 119 in 118. It was. 
Therefore, besides that, he taught them the judgments, mishfat. And this mishfat is nothing but expounding to them the attributes of Lord God and the demands of Lord God as a code of wisdom, which could be an act of deciding place. If you don't do that, this will come upon you. That's it with the Lord God. Hear and obey, you will be blessed. Become hard-hearted and don't hear the word of Lord God and reject and not obey the word of Christ. He calls already, I have rejected you and they are into the congregation of the dead. And simple, the Bible says, you are the cursed ones. So dear brethren, he taught them the mishpat and he taught them also the things the demands of the word of the Lord God. And if you don't meet or match the standards of the word of the Lord God, then quite obviously you are going to take the mishfat, the judgments of Lord God abiding upon you. And he was already scribe. Therefore, every pastor teacher who has been there in our pulpits, first they have to give up their lives to become already scribe unto the Lord. It is not by the virtue of the favor of the Father they become the priest or the pastor in charge. It is not by the virtue of their education what they have done in the theological colleges to call themselves as a historian or a senior pastors, to be making themselves to be the church leaders or the church pastors. It is by the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher who has trained them up to become a scribe. And the greater you fail to become a ready scribe unto the Lord, you will not prepare your heart. And the greater you haven't prepared your heart or established your heart to darash, to diligently seek and search the law of the Lord, and the greater not only just to search but to build it up and then to teach it and then to teach them the statutes what have been there in the Israel or the standards of now, the word of the Lord God. The greater, after these things, what the word of Lord God teaches to us, if you haven't prepared, if you haven't established, if you haven't made to look that the word of Lord God has been diminished in our midst, because these people, they are not going for proper exposition of the word. They are teaching you to you the lip service, the fear of men, the precepts of men. But what the Bible demands, therefore he says you're already rejected people and you're in the congregation of the dead. What a sad thing it is for us. And God the Father loves every believer. He wants every believer to be a described more than Ezra. Ezra was not having the spirit what we have now. It was endowment, but we have enablement constantly indwelling in us and calling us not to grave, not to squelch, not to wax, neither to lie to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And what a great life we have for us. What a great truth we have for us. Ezra didn't have it. He prepared his heart for what? For the love of the doctrine. Because he knew very well what the word of Lord God demands. The father of Ezra writing Psalm 119, teaching to him the importance of that. In our lifetime, if we would master the Psalm 119 in all the 176 verses what we have, in each and every alphabet of the Hebrew, 22 into 8, and every time you come up with the 8th verse, it is a new beginning again. Till 7th verse, he comes for the process of confession and rebound. And coming back to the 8th verse, he is coming back to the new life. And describing there, if you have learned that, you will really understand your life is the word of God. Your life is nothing but to become a disciple in the church age. Your life is not to be like a vain show, fraudulently showing to the people that you are an elder of the church or you are a pastor of the church and doing not the will of God the Father. Even by the virtue of the grace of Lord God, as you grow old, your hair will become gray, but it proves to you that when you stand in the pulpits or in the congregation to tell that you are an old man and you are a man of old and should have great knowledge in the word of God, since the white hairs which have been given to you as a sign of wisdom, as the Bible says, you cover it up with your hair dye and you look as if you are still childish and kiddish in opening up your mouth and declaring the righteousness of the Lord or the word of God. 
and their ample locks like such men in our pulpits, who call themselves to be the elders and who call themselves their maintaining great churches. What a sad thing it is for us, even the very gray hair, what would turn out for them, and it is a sign of a wisdom, says the Bible, but these people cover it up by hair dyeing their, their hair, and just they look not even to be hanged before the congregation, even their thinking is still kiddish in the knowledge of God. And whenever such idiotic morons will open up their mouth, how would God the Father be happy? Do you think Lord God the Father would be happy and content to look? Yes, I have made this man to be the pastor of the church and is really old and is having really good knowledge. The heart of the Lord God would weep. We read that in Jeremiah. In chapter 13, and then we read the word, particularly beginning with verse number 20 and following. Because it says for us, Lift up your eyes, and behold, them that come from the north. Where is the flock that was given thee, thy beautiful flock? What will you say when he shall punish thee, or hast thought them to be captains and as a chief over thee? Shall not sorrows take thee as a woman in travail? And then he says for us that, And if you say in thine heart, Whereof come these things upon me? For the greatness of the iniquity are the skirts discovered and the heels made bare. Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his parts? Then may you also do good that are accustomed to do evil. That's why they kill off the truth. That's why they wanted to slay Apostle Paul. Therefore he says, I will scatter them as a subble that passeth away by the wind of the wilderness. And the today present pastor teachers who are just looking upon to be as shepherds or reverders or reverends and doctorates idiotically. Do you know what the word says? They will be passed away by the wind of the wilderness. Abar, ruach, and the word for us midbar. This is the lot, the portion of the measure from me, said the Lord God, because you have forgotten me and trusted in false herd. The word again for us, shaker, deception. Therefore will I discover thy skirts upon the face of the shame appear. I have seen thine adulteries and thy neighings, the lividness of the wisdom and, and thy abominations on the hills in the fields. Want to your Jerusalem, will thou not be made clean? When shall it was once be? And this is the fate of the present Christendom for us. Because it says in verse number 17, beginning with in verse number 15 of the same Jeremiah 13, Hear and give here, be not proud, for the Lord hath spoken. Give glory, Nathan, to the Lord God, before he causeth darkness, and before your feet stumbleth upon the dark mountains. While you look for light, he turneth into the shadow of death, and make it to be gross darkness. And the word make it is nothing but sheeth, sheeth, used twice. And that meant to say, he put it upon to be as a gross darkness. And then do you know what the will of God the Father is? When these people don't turn out to do the will of God, when these people don't turn, be, turn out to become the disciples of the word of the Lord God, he says for us, but if you will not hear Shamma, hear and obey, that's what the word Shamma is all about. My soul shall weep in secret places. The word shall weep is Baka, bewail, cry, because of you. Creating man, he repented in Genesis 6. And now, being given to you the indwelling man from ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, he says for us in comparison to the order of the thoughts which cannot be numbered, applying to the church age, my soul shall weep in secret places. Look upon your own son and daughter if you have, if they've gone away from the way of righteousness and they've fallen into the way of all the standards, how much your soul will weep, thinking that he hasn't been yet settled in his life, thinking that he's always been a rebellion unto me. And yet, like the forgiving Father, Lord God the Father is waiting and seeking for you to forgive and making you to be, though your prodigal son come back to the Lord God. And yet, if you don't hear it, my soul shall weep in the secret places. And that's what we are today in the church. 
We are not making the good pleasure of Lord God the Father to be fulfilled through our lives, but rather we are making uh, the soul of God the Father to weep. And how you think you can have banquets? How you think you can have great pleasure at the success of your children? How idiotic we are not to learn the will of God, not to become the disciples of God, not to grow up as to be already scribes as Ezra was, as though in Matthew 13, 52, it is the kingdom of heaven, said the Lord God, the seventh parable, how it would be and how it would look like. And being, weeping and making the will of God the Father and the soul of God the Father to weep bitterly, we don't yet cleanse out our thinking. We yet don't come back to look and to look and to learn and to understand the demands of the statutes of the Bible, the commands of the Bible. If the Bible says for you in the church age you have to be a disciple growing up as grammar T as, then you have to do it no matter what it would cost. And it teaches in Luke chapter 13 and 14 if it is a cost of discipleship. If it were your own father and mother, if it were your own husband and children, or wife and children, if it were your own brothers and sisters, in fact, indeed, if it is your own life, just see that you put them aside and come and do the will of God. Because the cost of disciple, he said, first to sit and calculate what it would know. And he gives two illustrations, one building a tower and number two going a war against the enemy. Building a tower is nothing but building up a high place to look upon and to be available for the slave of the Lord God to be his disciple, to be alert every time. Why you type, why you build a tower? A tower is a place where you'll be alert about your enemy. And though the enemy comes, you look into the enemy's strength. But we have greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world who has given us a sound mind, a mind of great love that is agape demands of the Bible and of a sound courage, not a spirit of fear. So what we do, we calculate our enemy and we go back to build upon ambitious upon ambitious as we read in Jeremiah 51 and destroy the thinking of enemy and we don't give place to enemy. As we said in Ephesians, neither give place to the enemy, but rather resist it in James. Because how you can resist and you cannot give place to enemy. If you have place for Lord God, the Holy Spirit, there is no place for the enemy. And how to have the place of Lord God, the Holy Spirit controlling you when you are taking in the word of Lord God. If you are not taking in the word of Lord God, you are not being given that. Because the greater you love to be in rationalism and empiricism, liberalism and legalism of this world, becoming as a conventional Christians on this earth, you don't give place to Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and automatically the place of evil is taken in you. As we read in Ephesians 2, 1 and 2, the prince of the power of this air in the course of its life, aeon and cosmos thinking, even Archbishop Trench, we read that all masses of the thought collectively being put together. And when you're having a place to devil, how you can resist? The first thing he says, don't give place to the devil. That is what you have taken in the word of Lord God, being always in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And second thing he says, resist the devil. And it's very simple point is, always be mindful of the word of God. Be meditating upon it, Second Peter 3, 2, and growing up in grace, Second Peter 3, 18. That's how you can resist the devil. But you don't meditate upon the word of the Lord God day in and day out. And since you don't meditate, since you don't give number one priority to the will and to the work of Lord God by doing the mind of Christ to be executed in your lives. You know what the word says in Jeremiah 13? If you will not hear it, my soul shall weep. The word baka. A great grief. A great bitterly grief. Bewailing, lamenting. As the way we read in Luke chapter 7, in verse 13 and 14 and 15 and following, the mother, she had only one son, and he was dead. And they were carrying him. And Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had compassion on her because he knew what a pain she might be going through there. And he says, weep not. If you have your only child and if it has been dead, you know what is that weep. 
Here every believer is a precious child to the Lord God. If he hasn't turned out to become a disciple, there is a great lamentation in the though we speak anthropomorphically and apply the anthropopathism to the will of God, ascribing the human nature to the character of God. That's what anthropomorphism and anthropopathism is all about. Though he do not possess that actually, he bewails on behalf of us. He laments on behalf of us. And then what did Christ, O Lord of our God, do? He said, weep not. He had compassion on her and he rose the kid from the dead. The only son what she had. Likewise, he gives everyday compassion on us, renewing his mercies. Making us to become a gabor strength of a man. Making us to carry the yoke of the burden of the Lord God every day. Every day he gives us this compassion. But you will not hear. You will not give an importance, though you have been given warning discipline. Though you have been given intensified stage of discipline, taking you till to the point of death and releasing you. And ultimately you die sin unto death. Before your time you live this earth. Because you haven't heard warning discipline to become a disciple. You haven't heard to grow up in a grammatical standards. And the plagues and the things that we are going through on this earth in this COVID-19 sicknesses. It's a sign of a warning for us why it is happening. Because we have left the true path. We have left the right way of the Lord. To correct us, he's going to send such plagues. But we don't heed instruction for such plagues. We love to wear masks. Because you are fearing about your life. That's a precaution for you given. But you don't wear the masks against the unrighteous standards. Which you are always giving a place to devil. You're not wearing a mask to resist them. You're not washing your hands every time. You're not maintaining the distance. And you're not isol isolating yourselves to get yourselves quarantined. And as long as you are far away from these standards of unrighteous ways, and if you're still living, he says, my soul weepeth. And the word which teaches for us, dear brethren, over here, he says, in secret places, hiding places, and this hiding places is nothing but the preparation of crime for your pride. That is what your arrogance and the word for is pani im in my face. And my eye, he says, that is what looking upon the ways that you're walking, shall weep. This is again sore weep, dama. Again, the word in the Hebrew is dama, dama. To weep, it shall weep. And run down, yared, and descend down with tears. It is not that what your tears have encountered in the Bible is going to reward. <laughs> on your life, on behalf of your life, how many tears of the Lord God has been shed? Remember of that. And remembering of that, you should be alert. Lord, henceforth, I want you to get from your eyes the tears of great joy when I become predestined to your son's image, conforming to it, and walk in great uprightness and in truth. That's what we have to be. Those who shall go on to sow weepingly will reap with great joy. Christ our Lord our God has been wept on our behalf of our lives for so many long days. Sowing tears, let's give him back the tears of great joy. Therefore, he says, my eye shall dama dama, weep and weep, and run down, that is, descend down, 
with tears because the Lord's flock this is what the concern is about the church is carried into captivity taken into captive therefore every believer should wake up to become a ready scribe unto the Lord he says for us stating that in Psalms 45 1 the chief magician upon Shoshe Nim, which is called for us like a flower, for the sons of Korah, and then Maskil, a song of loves. The word loves is one beloved. My heart is indicating a good matter. <laughs> that is Rash Rakash to keep moving. Good, thob, agreeable matter is the word of God, the bar. I speak of the things which have made touching, that is, the deeds pertaining to Malak, the king. And then he says, my tongue is the pen. That is what we use it as a pen which engraves. It is called as a stylus iron with diamond tip, which has been used to write upon a stone or a metal. And this is what he says, my tongue is like a pen, stylus iron pen made with a diamond ring on that or a diamond stone on that to engrave upon stone or metal. He calls us to be the living stones, therefore it has to be engraved upon the stones to be the elders of the church as well, he says in Deuteronomy. So, my tongue is the pen that is stylus iron pen of a ready scriber. Again, we find over here the word called as maher. The word maher, again, the word scriber is nothing but software. So we need to look over here, dear brethren. The instruction what we look is that our tongue should be like the ready scriber pen. And the Red Scriber being the Lord God, when we become a Red Scriber like Ezra on this earth. Therefore in Matthew 13, 52, Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe who has been instructed unto the kingdom of heaven, the word instructed is Mathete Io, the one who follows the discipleship program, who have been taught, who have been instructed, who has been enrolled to become as a scholar. You come to the church to become as a scholar in the word of the Lord God. Therefore, he says, the scribe, again, the word for us is nothing but grammatias. And this is what we have to look upon the standards. In the Bible, a man learned in the Mosaic law and in the sacred writings, an interpreter or a teacher. And then furthermore, we find that scribes examine the more difficult and subtle questions of the law and added to the mosaic law decisions of various kinds of thoughts to elucidate its meaning and scope and did this to the determinant of their religion. Since the advice of men skilled in the law was needed in the examination in the causes and the solution of the difficult questions, they were enrolled in the Sanhedrin. That's why you come to the church to look upon this intensified stage of the angelic conflict and being not ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan doing the will of God. And then, and are mentioned in connection with the priests and elders of the people. Therefore, he is as good as a teacher, instructed from learning and having ability to teach the advantage when he learns so that he could be a part in the kingdom of heaven. So he says, a scribe who has been taught, who has been given this advantage of learning or been taught or instructed. And he says, unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man of his householder, oiko despotes, master of the house, which bringeth forth, that is what, akbalo, to put out and to make them to understand 
out of the treasure that is what he has been collected in the word of God, new and old, that is what from the New Testament and from the Old Testament, the right and equal teachings of this great and unique word of the Lord. The new is kindness in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and the old is palayas, which is nothing but the ancient wisdom. Therefore, we read that again in Isaiah 56, learn the old paths, look upon the old paths, the things which have been declared for us right from the beginning, what it is, go and learn, search it from there and you will understand understand because every man has become brutish in his knowledge every man has left the path of what the bible doctrine demands therefore right from the old if you would look from deuteronomy chapter 4 as well god the father instructs them to make the scribes lamad but they failed when ezra comes he takes up his heart to become a prepared man and a ready scribe of the lord god to teach us a lesson for us in the church age how we ought to be a ready scribe in the will of the lord god and do the great work of the lord god and yet we find many pastor teachers who have failed to do this and they are playing with this precious life of this unique calling in the church age and have become to such kind of an extension in this life that they think making the work as just nominal Christians, conventional Christians, meeting not the standards of Bible doctrine, they think that work is enough for them. But they have forgot they have been totally rejected people. And that's what you and I should learn. If you don't come back to look and understand the demands of the Bible as Ezra did, he prepared his heart, he established his heart to teach you, to make you lamad. What, what are the commands of the Bible and what are the judgments of the word of the Lord God being given for them? He prepared his heart. And today there aren't enough pastor teachers who have prepared their heart to look what is the Bible. Rather than that, they have prepared their hearts so that they could look in Philippians 3, as Apostle Paul said, their God is their belly, their glory is their shame. And what do they do? They mind earthly things. Being prepared for the earthly things. They forget to write upon the fate lines of their forehead. Lord, I have built up thy judgment, court of wisdom. Lord, I have built up the righteousness, the demands of the Bible doctrine. Therefore, O Lord, let me not rest or have relaxation in the spear of this defrauding man who use deceptively deceiving skills to destroy me. If you don't do the righteousness of the Lord God, you don't execute the judgments of the Lord God, you're always in the spear of such liars. And today we can find ample to the core in our pulpits. Those who are making to see that the Lord God's soul has been weeping in secret places because of you not hearing the word of the Lord and becoming arrogant enough and not to, and not to accept but to reject the word of truth you are surviving on this earth. What a great shame it could be for us. In the midst of such liars, we think we can make happy. When Lord God's soul is weeping because of our lives, which is not matching to his calling in the church age, we could think we can make happy, we can celebrate banquets, we can have a fun saying that our son is graduated and is working abroad, earning so much of money every month. On your behalf, if the soul of God the Father is weeping, do you think you are a blessed one, you are a cursed one to the core? That's why you don't have peace. That's why you don't have that prosperity. That's why you don't have that great inner stability. Having a relaxed attitude towards your unbelieving men, far less you can have a great fellowship of companion with your own blood. And what a sad thing it is for us. When you don't follow the standards of the word of the Lord God, when you don't follow the thinking of my Christ, what has been demanded for us, then you have been said already you are rejected and you show up your vain fraudulent way of life. And since you go away out from the way of understanding and you are not requiring to look what is the word of the Lord God and the Bible says you are into the congregation of the dead relaxedly living and yet your heart has not been pricked because you have been dead to Christ and not alive to Christ but dead to Christ and alive to the world. Though the soul of the Lord God weeps and wants you to become a pen of a red scriber, your iron stylus pen of you, 
to become a tongue of a royal scribe. And your tongue do not become a pen of a royal scribe. <laughs> because you haven't grown up to enroll yourselves to become scholars to the law. That's why joining as disciples meant to say, enroll yourselves to become scholars to the Lord. And grow up as gravity, as New Testament theologians. And if you don't grow up in such way, your tongue, what you use, the words on this earth, it will be vain and useless. Your ears, what they hear, will be for vain and useless. What you hear, so you perceive and so you talk. If your hearing is not in the will of God of divine revolution in exegesis, your talk also will be foolish. And for every word what you talk, since I've already given a place to devil, by that we meant to say rejecting exegesis in your pulpits. You hear the worldly talks, you try to preach worldly behavior standards. And what a great pain it is for us to look that the soul of Lord God is weeping in the secret places. But this lustful man who love to grieve and squelch and wax and lie, the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, are rejoicing in the open speculars of their tongue. Dear brethren, you have to join up and roll yourself as scribe. If you don't enroll yourself to become a grammatist, no matter what the best intention of the church may be, you are making God the Father to be grieved and to weep. And if in secret places Lord God the Father grieves and weeps on behalf of us, do you think you can be happy? Think over these issues. The decision is left in your hands. And which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God, the Holy Spirit, leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order we'll telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to care to Sotan Laga. Herald the word in season and out of season, because of the Diamonds from my witnesses, wherewith you have been called. The number one Diamonds from my witnesses in Welling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two Diamonds from my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to dear brethren, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, learning the truth, O oh Lord, what a great privilege it is for us, so that, O oh Lord, we could be free from this deceptive way of thinking on this life and not to rest over there O Lord when we completely build up and execute thy demands and thy righteousness always walking uprightly in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit what a great hidden things are kept for us in the Bible O Lord and when we exegete it it would match our thinking according to thy will becoming a great scribe and rolling ourselves to become a great scholar a scholar of the word, so that our tongue could become the pen of a ready scribe. Help us a lot to be, as per thy will, the scribes in this earth. And to get out from our treasure, from out of this old and new, thy good, great treasure of glory for you. And Father, on our behalf, O Lord, we pray for, forgiving, for asking forgiveness in the presence, if you have made on our lives as well, to cause thee to weep bitterly, to run down thy tears from thy eyes sore because of our grieving and squelching of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Father, till we could grow from milk to bread, from bread to meat, we might have done a lot. And we accept that even we are doing it, since we have not made our lives to be crystal clear true yet to thy word. 
Help us, Father, to come out from such lives and not to make you to weep on our behalf, but rather you could find a good pleasure, as you said, upon your son. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well delighted. Make our lives to be worthy for such calling, O Lord, and walk worthy in the grace which are bestowing upon our lives day by day, to the praise of your glory and your grace. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father, the Lord God, the Holy Spirit would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Holy Lord.